Uh, yeah, it was good. I think still at that point in time, it was it was mainly only really Australian players that could play in the tournament. So I, I guess it, it probably didn't quite feel like a proper PSA international tournament just yet, but it was still still good to turn up there and, and play well and, and have a win. And as you said, get it off on a on a good foot because I'd I let my ranking kind of drop off completely. So yeah, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but um, yeah, it helped climb me back up a bit quicker. No, I kind of decided at the end of 2019 that um, I was going to stop and and kind of and kind of stop playing PSA and and pro pro squash. But um, kind of the following year, COVID rolled around and I actually wasn't allowed to work. Um, so I didn't really have much else to do. So I just started training again. Um, mm-hmm. Our lockdown in Melbourne lasted a couple of years, so it was only kind of a couple of months after that lockdown finished that those tournaments were coming up, and I just thought I was feeling pretty fit again, and the body was feeling good, so so why not kind of jump back in and, and do a few tournaments again? No, nah, there was probably a group of five of us that had an exemption to train because we were PSA registered. Yeah, um, you probably noticed a couple of couple of um, new players from Melbourne pop up on the PSA in that period of time, so they could get yeah. a get a letter to. <laughs> jump on court so yeah i mean i work at a squash center and i, I kind of help manage the center so i had the keys to the building and, and a letter to say that i was allowed to be there so mm-hmm. anyone else who had that letter was allowed to kind of come in and train and we just did a bit of group training throughout the days um to keep us keep us occupied and keep us sane yeah that was that was way different um i was kind of playing guys top 60 top 70 again um which was a bit of a shock to the system because I hadn't played that level for at least two and a half, three years. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think I think I I handled it okay, but I really struggled through it. Like, I think I had a pretty brutal quarterfinal with Henry Leon. Yeah. And from that point on, I was pretty sore and pretty tired for the rest of the tournament. But I, I, yeah, I don't know. I think those courts kind of suit me. I, obviously, I, I kind of like the lengthy matches and it's quite bouncy and hot up in coughs. So, I could, even though I was maybe feeling a bit sore each day, the ball was quite lively. So, it kept me, kept me in the rallies a bit longer, which which suited me, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it did. It was, I, it was a strange one. You don't really know what to expect, but you can kind of feel what level you're playing in training. And I felt like I was still thereabouts, um, which, which was kind of the level that I was playing before I stopped, which which is about that, you know, 60, 70 in the world mark. Um, but yeah, winning that just kind of validated that, you know, I hadn't really lost too much, I guess. Um, and yeah. I was still kind of maintaining that level. No, that's um, right. Yeah, I had won it a couple of times before, but it's, Sometimes it depends who shows up. It's it's yeah. lucky for me, you know, your Pilly and your Cusk and your Zach Alexander and stuff aren't aren't there at the time because um yeah, I'm not sure I'd win it if, if all those boys were around, but <laughs> I'll take it while it's there. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was good fun. I mean, I kind of more went with the approach of having a bit of fun with it. Um yeah. but once you're on there, it, it does get quite serious quite quick. But um I thought the scoring was cool actually. I thought the power plays were a good idea. The the rallies jumped up in intensity straight away and I don't know. For me, the highlight was was playing against Paul. I hadn't hadn't played him for years and years, but we we used to play heaps back in the day. So yeah, to jump back on with him when he's now you know number two in the world was was pretty cool to have another run with him. Um, what what was the difference? Yeah, that, do you think so from from playing years ago and some of the Aussie five and ten Ks and stuff? What's what's the difference between him then and him now? Do you think? Ah, uh, it's it's a little bit of everything. But I mean, if if I think back, way back, probably ten plus years ago, I think. If I kept a bit of pressure on him, he he would be able to like lose his head a bit and tin out um, and get right. frustrated. But his mental now is unbelievable. He just stays at that steady kind of focused, a positive state of mind. Um, and with that, he's become so much more accurate and less error error prone. Um, mm-hmm. his short games improved heaps. Like I felt like in that match, just in the Nations Cup, he, he squeezed a few loose balls out of me where. I would have backed myself to maybe pick up the next ball in the past, but he was actually just finishing the ball so well, um, keeping it so short. And it was just, yeah, the, the quality was was up heaps. Yeah, full full credit to him, like, to, to go from... Because I think we were kind of neck and neck for quite a while. And I'm a couple of years older, but not that much older. And I probably thought we were we were tracking very similarly. And then he just he just took his game to another level and then took yeah. it to another level again. And, yeah, um, heaps of respect for what he was able to do there. He didn't just burst onto the scene. Like, he just kept his head down and kept working at it and kept making the right choices and, and moving himself into places that was good for his squash. And um, yeah, he just, he just found a way basically, which again is, is another thing that people from this side of the world can learn that you might not be, you know, top 16, top 30 in world juniors or whatever, but if you 
keep kind of showing up and doing the right thing and, and training hard, you you might get there in the end. Yeah. Yeah, it was all right. I was like, actually, I was actually first reserve. So I didn't actually know I was going to be playing. So I kind of entered it. I was playing Nations Cup. And if I got the call up, I just had to change, like, you know, delay my travel time for a couple more days. So, yeah. Um, again, it kind of felt like a, a free swing and a free hit. And I drew Greg Lovin. And, and to be fair, he just kind of outplayed me on the day. And um, and then, yeah, I was pretty happy to, to get home and, and take a few days off. <laughs> yeah. I thought I probably could have had a bit more of an impact and, and get into the game a bit more. I think we were, we were pretty even up to a five or six almost games. And then um, he he played a few good rallies in that important time to go, you know, eight, six, nine, six. And then that game kind of felt gone. But it kind of happened three times in a row, which, yeah, I mean, credit to him for, for playing those big points better than I did um, but in hindsight yeah I wish I had it stuck in a little bit longer and, and maybe gone seven or eight or nine or rather than, than falling away a little bit um, yeah. at that, that crucial stage of the games yeah to be honest I think I'll still stay pretty local um, mm-hmm. I mean I'm 34 now and I'm kind of just doing it because I can it's a bit of fun but I don't really feel the need to chase those big events anymore and yeah and, you know trek up for two three four weeks at a time like I, I work full time and stuff, and I just yeah, I think if I can sneak away for three four days here and there and play ten k, pretty close by, um, I'm normally pretty happy to do that. But it's a whole other level to, to start chasing those platinums and and really trying to push that kind of ranking and full time touring. Yeah, yeah, I think like normally I can get up and do a session before work, so just just take one take a session at seven o'clock in the morning or so, and then I'm kind of flexible with my start time, so it just depends when I, I book lessons in for the day. And then, yeah, as you said, if time permits, and this year I've been trying to fit in that second session occasionally, like in the afternoon. Um, but yeah, it's just in my kind of opinion, like the work kind of comes first at the moment. And if I can fit in training and tournaments around it, then, then I do it. Um, but yeah, it seems like already it's getting harder and harder again. Like fresh out of COVID, I was kind of like, yeah, let's take it all on again. But I'm like, oh, maybe um, maybe I need to step back again. But we'll see how we go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a few people have said that, but I'm, I'm going that long, mate. I think yeah. if I think maybe six months to a year more, but and then I'm uh I'm definitely pretty keen to hang up the racket. I think. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean you'd ask any kind of player in Australia and they're all we've been crying out for it for years. And I think they were closer to having an even bigger event. I think it was a thirty K in the end, but I think they were looking at bronze or even even a platinum. Um yeah. and I think it's pipeline in the coming years, which mm-hmm. I think it'll be huge for the area. Um attract those players, get get a massive buzz around it. And I think I think both Squash Australia and PSA are trying to kind of collaborate and work together to make sure it happens. And yeah, I think I think it'd be a really positive thing if it did, because squash as a sport can can sometimes struggle a little bit in Australia at the moment with participation. But if we can get it in the media and, and get these big events and showcase it somewhere with a glass court outside where a lot of people see it and, and walk past it it'd go a long way yeah, yeah, I think so. like, there's, there's a couple of guys like someone like joseph white who's just outside the top 100 he's he's overseas quite a bit and you can see the benefits that it's having for his game um every time he comes back he's, he's playing a bit better um but yeah i think that exposure yeah it's it's important but either way i think if you turn it if you're trying to go pro and squash in australia you'll have to move overseas eventually anyway like one tournament's not gonna kind of do it for you but i think it might just help trigger a bit more participation if you get those bigger events and as I said in the media I think it's crucial um because there's just so many sport options here in Australia there's the kids play they've got the, sports, the choice of you know 30 40 different sports to play so yeah. squash sometimes doesn't get a look in um but yeah I mean that's what it's all about it's it's getting getting it out there and, and trying to get them playing